I'm Buddy Voigt, and I play the guitar with the high band. I'm Jeff Myers, and I play the cello. My name is Myla Wingard, and I am a violinist. Hi, I'm Lou Rosen. Uh, I play bass guitar, uh, occasionally some mandolin. I'm Corey Briggs. I play bass guitar for part of the High Holy Day services. Hi, I'm Ilana Hirschfeld. I play the violin in the high band. I'm Heidi Gantwork, and I have been singing with Beth Israel for more than 20 years. I'm Andy Mayer, and I have been uh, playing piano at Beth Israel for 20 two years around. I've been in the Beth Israel Teen and Youth Choir since I was five years old. I have been playing since um, Cantor Rabbi Arlene Bernstein invited me about 20-something years ago. Let's see, I've been playing with the high band since probably more than a little over 20 years, I think. And I've been doing this for, I think, 15 years now. And I've been playing uh, since the, the probably 2001. What's your Beth Israel musical origin story? It actually goes back to 1985 when I used to sit in the balcony uh, at the old Beth Israel singing with the choir with Ken Fall at the piano and Cantor Merrill down at the Bema. So I, it goes back a long time. Uh, singing with some of the members that are in our high holiday choir to this date. I was working at KNSD as a television producer and Irv Cass was the news director at the time. and. I was pregnant with Isaac, I was feeling disconnected and wanted to be part of a Jewish community and Irv made sure that I met with John Stein and that I came to Beth Israel. We started at Tachabat soon after he was born and we've been here ever since. I begged to be uh, in the choir as young as possible because my sister was in it and yeah it's all history from there. Beth Israel from the very beginning with uh, um, with Cantor Bernstein, with Kara Friedman at the time, um, and then we met uh, Heidi and Andy, and we just we just formed a wonderfully musical community. My first experience uh, playing violin with Congregation Beth Israel was in 1969, when I was invited by Ima, Helene Schlafman, to play violin in a production of Fiddler on the Roof. Um, we loved, we did love the music here, and music was something I could connect to. So early on, I found myself being really interested in like what music was happening at the synagogue. Like, and I actually left my wife and twins at the hospital to go play Kol Nidre and then go back. I had something to atone for right away. So there you go. And I believe it was after um, the accomplished bassist Bert Turetsky played with the high band, if it was called the high band at that time, but, um, and then he, he left, uh, and, and I thought, you know, and I approached Rabbi Kanner Bernstein and said, I'd love to add the, you know, add, add the bottom to the band, and she, she welcomed me with open, open arms. And After a couple sessions, we were talking to uh, RC, and she found out that I played bass guitar, and she took the hook out and said, okay, you're playing High Holy Days. You can't really say no to her, so I was conscripted. Uh, RC put us together in there. It was all RC's doing. What is it about making Jewish music in particular that moves and motivates you? What's, what's your why? So our lives are complicated and busy and challenging and there are ups and downs and we pay too much attention to the news and Andy and I have been in bands singing rock and roll and rhythm and blues and jazz not very well but when we come here and we are putting this kind of music together with the people we care so much about and we're doing it for Shabbat or the Chagim it is a sense of release, it is a sense of this joy in putting this together. It really takes us to a different place. And people ask me how, if I'm working so hard during the week, I can still come here and sing on Fridays. And I say, this is, this is the most joyful part of my week. The, making music with all of these people is my Shabbat. Jewish music for me is my neshama. That's how I daven, that's how I pray. And so the opportunity to play in the band, or in the, particularly in the high band, is 
for me, is my way of davening, is my way of praying, it's my way of having a connection um, to whatever <laughs> the universe is. Right. Um, As an adult, particularly, being able to daven this way is almost better than davening this way for me. I love my, my what I call goosebump moments, um, where I feel just whether it was a, a note or a whole piece or a whole prayer that just gives me, you know, a good feeling. Um, to me, that's as important and as meaningful as, as saying words or, or, you know, going through other, other motions of prayers. Um, to me, that's the spirituality of, uh, of what I find in the music and in the religion. There is, you know, for me on just the musical level of um, wanting to add to this ensemble that we create, you know, this kind of, it's like a, a salad of sound and wanting to really bring something to that. And so for me, the, you know, the, the bass adds a pulse, um, it adds kind of a driving groove and it, and it adds the foundation to the, to the musical harmony. Maybe even the bigger reason w why I do this and uh, is, um, you know, creating a, a, a musical, an imprint, like a musical memory for the, for the next generation. Music is the thing I connect with the most in the world. And this is just a more meaningful, deeper way of the spirituality is sort of getting into me. Uh, and I always thought of praying as sort of a, a one-way uh, exercise. And when I'm playing, it's, it's a two-way exercise. Uh, it's I get energy and feeling from the band and from the choir and from the clergy and from uh, those who are here in the sanctuary. Uh, and it's my way of uh, praying and being connected. The way I connect to my Judaism is through the music. That's always been a very big part of um, the spiritual aspects of my of my religious practice. And I've loved being able to take the music and just play whatever I feel. There's not a script. There's not like a prescribed um, piece or part of music that I have to play. I just get to play what I want. I've always been with music, and even back in my earliest days here at Beth Israel, the music has always been my attachment point to Judaism. It's the thing that makes it close for me. Um, making music is, I think, as close to spiritual as I think I'm going to get, um, and I really connect to it. And and the milieu that we have here at the at the synagogue is is just unbelievable. I mean, you know, Cantor Bernstein is just uh, RC has 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 just put us all together and and it works and and um, Andy is really great at writing some of those pieces you know we joke it's two or three chords but they're just incredible chords and um, and, and there's a couple of pieces you've done recently that I just can't play enough and I connect to that it's a chance to just relax it's my Shabbat playing no matter how hard my week was um, coming here on Shabbat to play Friday night, I, I can't go to sleep till almost midnight or one o'clock because it just re-energizes me. When you think about the music and prayers of the High Holy Day season, which pieces move you the most as a leader and which pieces move you mm. as, as, a, as a whole person? As a whole person, it has to be Yom Kippur Day. Um, that's, that's my favorite day. Um, one, it's easier to fast when you're playing all day. I mean, just the mechanics aside. But the, it just feels like there's a real arc as we go towards the end. And um, I, I just, I, I can't pick out a particular piece. I guess maybe Tikka Bel uh, uh, Kaddish. The Tikka Bel Kaddish? The Tikka Bel Kaddish that just is so alive, and that you know that opening, da 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 dun 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 dun, dun and whatever it is, I'm singing it incorrectly. Andy, I know I always sing it wrong, <laughs> um, <laughs> um, but I play it usually 
fairly correctly, not always. <laughs> um, but it just, it, it, it's just such a, a, an alive moment in the service. Because by the time that comes at the end of Yom Kippur and we're all punchy from having fasted all day and played all day and prayed all day and we hear this very upbeat, uh, fun piece, it just, uh, you know, I, I like it when we, when we get there. It's really a great way to, uh, to wrap up the holiday. Uh, it's, 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 it marks it's the end. And I really have a chance when we're up there to think about why we're there. You know, the gates are closing and, and we're playing this music and, and you're, you're tired, you're, you're, you're hungry, but you're not thinking about it. I'm just connected to it. And it, it just feels very connective. Zohreinu has always been um, a really memorable piece to me. We've, we've played it, you know, since I've always remembered it being at the high holidays and, um, then joining the band and being able to play the more instrumental version that just that really uh, is spiritual for me. And I hope that that's a, you know, a communal point for the community. The Barosh Shana, um, uh, Who By Fire piece, um, just, you know, as we know, speaks to uh, the, the fragility of life and the uncertainty. Um, you know, which, which could bring up, which could be quite despairing or, however, then we do, we do Eitz Chaim and we do Lador Vador and we know it's gonna carry on. It would be Sim Shalom. Uh -huh. It's, you know, grant peace. And, and I think that encapsulates what we try to do on High Holy Days. I mean, that's the message. If there's a theme, that's the theme. And that's really the theme every week at Shabbat. And, uh, but that song is sultry uh, and it is simple, but it has so much emotion. Singing the song that Andy wrote uh, on Yom Kippur uh, at the family service for the past many years, singing Yesh Kochavim, and I know what that does for people emotionally. Uh, you can see it, um, it feels important. It feels like it provides something very important for people. Uh, and and I, I love singing that. I love being a part of that. It, 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 has, to be, it has to be the High Holiday Shema. <laughs> it's the mo when I hear it, it just transports me. You know, Shema Yisrael, it's so dramatic. As soon as I hear it, it transports me to High Holidays. It means that I'm not, it's not any other time of year, it's not any other time of day, it's not anything else, it's just such a transporting piece of music. It's the most powerful thing. In the month of Elul, we offer Psalm 27. We say, Achat Alti, one thing I ask of God, um, and that is to dwell in God's house. What is one thing that you would like to ask of our congregation as they prepare for the High Holy Days? You know, Elul is, Elul is, it's always difficult. Um, and if you, if you play, if you play the game, I mean, it's always difficult because, because what do you do in Elul? You, you, you start to introspect like as soon as it starts and then and you, work, or you work on things. And so I would say, you know, live your best lives. It's one thing I think we already do well and we can do even better. And the more conversations I have with Jewish people around San Diego, the prouder I am of Beth Israel. And it's the way in which we welcome and the way we include and the passion that we bring to the issues that are in a lot of ways dividing our country. And I hear from so many people that Beth Israel creates a safe space for LGBTQ Jews, for Jews of color, for Jews of different nationalities, for interfaith families. And I would ask if ever you looked at somebody funny when they walked in here because they didn't seem like one of us, if ever you asked a question about whether somebody belongs in this congregation, that's exactly the time that you go up, introduce yourself and have a conversation and make that person feel even more welcome. It's why I'm so proud to be a part of Beth Israel. I would ask for uh, participation. Um, I love, the, you know, I love the responsiveness for when when the whole congregation comes together in one voice and reads responsively. And on those songs that people join in on, and we hear the whole voice, we hear the youth choir, the teens, the adults, 
and the congregation singing together, I think it just, it just elevates the entire experience. So if, if there could be one thing that I would ask is that, you know, that, um, that people feel comfortable to participate and they, and they, they don't hold back and they just sing it out. I hope you can be in a, or, or I hope it can take, take us all to a, just a, a higher place um, and allow us all to imagine you know, some great possibilities for the future. Our, our congregation's very fortunate. And there are those who aren't as fortunate. And we have a lot of programs at CBI where we try to reach out to those not as lucky. Uh, but we could always do more. I know I could do more. Sometimes everything these days feels so broken. You know, the, the world has its problems. Um, I think the thing that I want, and I actually get usually, is the community. It's that, and that's why I'm so happy that everybody comes back. I mean, I think the, you know, going over the web through streaming is a wonderful thing, but there's nothing like feeling connected to everyone that's out here. Um, and, and I would have to say, you know, just, just that wholeness. I mean, my whole thing, you know, my professional life is also in Judaism uh, through the camp. And I, I'm all about Jewish continuity. It seems that it happens better when everyone's here in these seats um, and we're praying together. That's, you know, Judaism to me is not just the music, but it's that communal effort of, hey, here are all these people in the same room. We're petitioning, maybe not so much God, but each other of these are the values that we think are important. And for me, community is that, is that thing. That to me is the crux of, of my experience in Judaism. I would just ask that everyone come with as much authenticity as they can. Just bring themselves without any judgment, but really find the space for reflection. If you could ask of the congregation one thing as, they, as, as we all prepare, for these high holy days, what would it be? To listen. <laughs>